In the previous video, we have uh, already seen what DES is. I already gave an introduction to what DES looks like and how it is based on the feastal architecture, right? So we had already seen that the entire process begins with the very first step that is initial permutation. That is nothing but referring to a table called as the initial permutation table and according to that table, changing the positions of the plain text internally. So we have already seen that. Next, we divided that output of initial permutation into two halves that is LPT and RPT of 32 bits each. Then the internal rounds will begin. So we are going to cover the internal rounds in this video. So the first internal round is nothing but what we call as key transformation. Okay, so let's see how this works. The very first step is key transformation and what happens over here is if you remember the initial diagram which we had seen uh, two videos back we had discussed that the initial key or the actual key over here is of 56 bits and using that 56 bits we are going to convert the 64 bit plain text into a 64 bit cipher text it might sound confusing because if you see the diagram carefully each plain text block is divided into two blocks of 32 bits each so we know that internally we need a key of size 32 bits only so why are we having this key of 56 bits or uh, to be precise, how we are going to make use of these 56 bits of keys, right? So let me tell you that in detail. That is what this step is all about, key transformation. So what we are going to do is, for each round, a 56-bit key is available. From the uh, from this 56 bits key, a different 48-bit sub-key will be generated during each round using a process called as key transformation. This is the confusing part. Uh, we have to pay close attention to the explanations that I'm going to uh, provide over here. For each round, a 56-bit key is available. From this 56-bit key, a different 48-bit sub-key that is going to be used for each round is going to be generated using a process called as key transformation. So let's see what this process is all about. How we do it, it is very simple. We divide the 56-bit initial key into two halves of 28 bits each. Okay, so I am explaining it over here. We are having a 56-bit key. We are dividing it into two halves of 28-bit each. Now what we are going to do is these halves are circularly left shifted. These halves are circularly left shifted by one or two positions depending on the round number. Okay, so basically these halves or basically these keys are nothing but represented like this. So we are having two such set of keys okay where each of these keys are basically of 28 bits now next what happens is depending upon the round number as we have already seen there are 16 rounds over here so depending upon the round number depending upon in which round we are currently working upon we have to decide the number of shifts okay so in this case if we are currently in round number one what we have to do is we have to refer this particular chart for round number 1, 2, 9 and 16, we will make the circular left shift by only one position. Okay. For the other rounds, we are going to make circular left shifts by two positions. The circular left shift is a very simple concept. For example, you are having values as 1, 3, uh, 4, 2, 9, whatever. Right. So if we are in round number 1, what we'll do is we'll shift this only by one position. So what happens is this first value will now go to the last position. That is what happens. So after round number one, we will get again. So after this particular step, we will again get 28 bits of the values because what we are doing over here is we are doing all these operations on the key. We have not yet touched the plain text. So we are obtaining a 48 bit key out of these 56 bit keys and this is the way of doing it. Again, I'm repeating the 56 bits are divided into two halves of 28 bits each and we are performing the key transformation based upon the round number. If the round number is 1, 2, 9 or 16, we will circularly left shift it by one position. Similarly, if the value is similarly, if the round number is anything except 1, 2, 9 or 16, there will be two such shifts and we'll get the final key after uh, the shift happens. Okay, so refer this statement now. After an appropriate shift, 48 bits out of the 56 bits are selected using the following table. Again, 
as you remember we have already seen over here in the very first statement that out of the 56 bits available key we are going to make use of 48 bits ka key sub key right so that is obtained using this process there is this beautiful table in front of you you have to refer this table you have to refer the keys you're having so for example this might be key one this might be key two each of size 28 after performing the shifts okay so now what you're going to do is simply refer the table the value which is present at the 14th position in these keys right so this first key one is uh, ranging from 1 to 28 the second key is ranging from 29 to 56 right so what we'll do is whichever value is present at the 14th position that particular value comes to the first position in the actual 48 bit key that we are looking for similarly whichever value is present at the 17th position will now come to the second position and so on this entire process goes on and if you pay close attention you will be able to see that it is having four rows and 12 columns so 12 into 4 is nothing but 48 so after this step you will obtain your 48 bit round key or sub key so i hope you are now in a position to understand how this particular key is generated this entire process will happen for 16 times because we are having 16 rounds now this is clear i i assume we know that this plain text is of 64 bits initially there were 56 bit ka key we converted that into a 48 bit ka key again my problem is not yet getting solved because 48 bits cannot encrypt 64 bits i require the key of either 32 bits or 64 bits but what happens is we are further dividing the plain text into two parts each of 32 32 so we require a 32 bit key only to perform all the xor and other operations right so how to obtain that there are two options available what we can do is either we can reduce these 48 bits and convert that into 32 bits or we can expand the rpt from 32 bits to 48 bits so that we can compute the xor operation of the key and the rpt i hope it is making sense and that is what brings me to the next round that is expansion permutation see over here i have explained uh, after the initial permutation we had both the lpt and rpt of size 32 bits so we need to expand the rpt to 48 bits for further operations so that is what we are going to do over here so let's see how to perform the expansion permutation it is the simplest operation out of all the operations of des 